Hey GED students, I had a student on YouTube drop a question in the comments. So he was working on the intro to algebra lesson where you're just basically solving one step equations, but he didn't attempt that beginning level practice. He stepped it up a little bit, was working on the experience level practice where fractions showed up. And then that's where he got a little tripped up. Now, there's a lot of GED students that get uh, just panicked at the sight of a fraction. And let me assure you, as I assured him, you can totally do these fractions in your calculator. You do not need to be able to do them by hand. However, this particular student really wanted to understand how to do them by hand, thinking it would really strengthen his understanding for when he went to college, and I do agree with that. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna do the math here by hand, and I'll show you just how easy it is. Um, these were not particularly complex problems. Some of them on that worksheet, I'd rather do in a calculator myself. They're kind of nasty, but these were not so bad. So let's look at the first example. Uh, five and a half plus x is equal to six. Uh, directions here, oh, I should have written them down. The directions here had said solve the equations. So solve, what does that mean to solve? We're looking for the value of the variable that makes the equation true. What number would the letter have to be in order to make this true? And we solve by isolating the variable, getting the number alone. So Let's get a different color here. I think I'll use, let's use purple. Purple sounds pretty. Because uh, right now, this letter X is not alone. I'm gonna have to do some work to isolate him. I'm gonna have to get rid of that five and a half. Okay, now you might ask yourself, what is the five and a half doing? And a lot of students look right here and say, well, that five and a half is adding. And I kind of agree with you, except for that plus is in front of the X. So the X is adding, but what is it adding with? It's adding with this positive five and a half. So yes, the five and a half is adding because it's positive. Okay, and so I am going to do the opposite. I wanna get rid of this five and a half. I want it to zero out is one way to think of that. And so in order for me to do that, I'm gonna to have to subtract five and a half, okay? The opposite of adding five and a half is subtracting five and a half, so that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it away. Now again, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I keep my balance. I have to just keep the two sides equal and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna jump across here and I'm gonna subtract five and a half from this side as well. Now this is about to get much nicer. Let's go ahead and see what my new equation will be after making that balanced change, okay? So if I have a positive or plus five and a half and I subtract out five and a half from that, it will zero out, I'll have nothing there. So what will be left? Just a positive x or mm, x. No reason to write the positive sign if it's all by itself. And that x will be equal to, make sure your equal sign stays, hmm, let me say that again, make sure your equal sign stays steady. And then here's this math to do, six minus five and a half. And I got a lot of students going, oh Kate, I hate adding and subtracting fractions. It's so awful. You said I didn't have to do it for the GED. Uh, again, you don't. But I just wanna show you how easy this particular problem is. I don't need a bunch of steps to memorize. I don't have to convert. I don't have to find a common denominator. I can totally do this one in my head. And so can you using a visualization. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm starting with six things. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what does it mean to subtract? To subtract means to take away. So I'm gonna take away from this group of six things. I'm gonna take away five and a half of them. Five and a half of them. Okay, so I'll take this one away. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, I took away five, but I don't, didn't want to just take away five. I wanted to take away five and a half. So let's get out a little line here so I can half my last thing, and I'll take one of those halves away. Okay, so I just took away five and a half. And what's left? Well, you can see that all I have left is one half. And so what is x equal to? x is equal to one half. I did not need to know much about adding and subtracting fractions at all to do that one. 
Okay, now I just thought I would follow along with this vein because one of the other problems on this sheet uh, was similar, had involved a similar concept. You could totally do it in your head, but it also threw in negative numbers, which is, you know, uh, a whole new ball game. Now we're getting even trickier. Understanding adding and subtracting fractions is one of the hardest basic math concepts for most students. And then adding and subtracting negative numbers, positive and negative numbers, is another one of the hardest uh, basic math concepts for most students. So this one combines it. So tricky. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So equation says x minus 3 is equal to negative 5 and a half. Again, if I'm solving, my goal is to find out what x would have to be by isolating x, getting it alone, using inverses, opposites. So I want that x to be alone. I'm going to get, need to get rid of that minus 3. Now that 3 is minusing. See that sign's in front of it. So I will do the opposite. I will add 3. Now I can do whatever I want to an equation, literally whatever I want to an equation, as long as the left and the right hand sides stay equal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my change to make sure that the two sides remain equal. If I do the same things on both sides, it will remain equal. And let's see what happens. Subtracting 3 and adding 3 are opposites. They cancel. Think about it. If I took $3 out of your account, but then I put $3 back into your account, it cancels itself out. I didn't change your account balance at all. And so you'll still have your same old account balance. In this case, uh, that'd be x. And now that's going to be equal to what we get on the other side. Now this one's interesting because not only do I have these mixed numbers with whole numbers, but I also have this negative. So let's think about it like this. Let's think about I owe you five and a half things. That's how whenever I get stuck with negative numbers or I have a student who gets stuck with negative numbers, that's usually where I'll start because a lot of people understand money. So let's imagine that I owe you five and a half dollars or I owe you five and a half apples, something like that. Okay, so again, it's negative, but I'm just going to make a picture to represent what I owe you. And I'm going to just put the word O so we realize that it's negative. So one, two, three, four, five, and a half. Okay, beautiful. So five and a half things. This is what I'm supposed to give you. Now look, this is a plus three. Okay, so it's positive. So it's not me owing. It's actually me, you know, like paying off that debt. It's the money I have. All right, so let's start applying that $3 I have to the debt I owe you. Okay, so if I pay you one of the dollars, I'll owe you one less dollar. Okay, so I just paid you one. When I pay you two of those dollars, I'll owe you two less dollars. And if I pay you three of those dollars, now I've paid off one, two, three dollars of my debt, but I still have some debt, don't I? I still owe you one, two and a half dollars. So that's money I owe you, so it's negative two and a half. Beautiful. So there we are practicing some fraction visualization to understand this subtracting and adding with uh, mixed numbers and fract, or I should say whole numbers and mixed numbers. And then also applying those skills for negatives. Whew, a lot going on in these problems. Once again, if you're an overachiever like this student and want to understand this video is for you, but if you're like, Kate, this is really hard and I'm overwhelmed, you could have totally used your GED calculator for any of these. Go check out my video on how to use the GED calculator for fractions and you'll be you'll be good to go <laughs> all right if you have any questions about this or any other ged math topic be sure to drop it in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them happy learning